There's a phrase in American politics that became extremely popular for conservatives and people in conservative circles to repeat back to the Obama administration. It came from Rahm Emanuel, who was the then chief of staff. He's also the former mayor of Chicago. And basically the way it goes is never let a good crisis go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. Now, while this phrase on its own sounds pretty bad, it sounds like politicians are taking advantage of a certain situation to advance their agenda. It's actually worse when you give it more context, because given more context, when you let the clip play, it shows that they're actually trying to push their agenda and just using the crisis to do so. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. Now, like all the terrible things in this country, the idea of using a completely unrelated crisis to forward your previous political agenda happens to be a bipartisan attitude in this country. The Patriot Act is an excellent example of this. That $10,000 or above deposit or withdrawal reporting number to the FBI that's in the Patriot Act actually traces its origin to early to mid-90s banking regulations proposed under the Clinton administration. They couldn't get it passed by Congress under the Clinton administration under the guise of regulating banking. So all of a sudden, after 9-11, it was shoved into the Patriot Act as a newly branded matter of national security. Now, being aware of this recent history and how Congress tends to react whenever a large portion of the American public are expecting some kind of action from them to resolve a crisis. I was incredibly skeptical of Mitch McConnell's proposed stimulus bill and the idea that there was bipartisan support or bipartisan amendments did not soothe my concerns one bit. For me, the way that the Congress should always legislate, and this is whether we're in a crisis scenario or not, is topic by topic and issue by issue. The whole reason that these bills are so broad and so big is to hide special interest carve-outs amongst all the pages to get people to vote for the things that we think are essential while also voting for things that are just terrible. So unlike many right-leaning people, both online and in the media, when the Democrats initially blocked the Mitch McConnell bill from coming up for a vote, I wasn't that angry about it because I do think there needs to be time to go through this legislation with a fine-tooth comb. However, I'm not ignorant on how the Democrats work. I knew that the reason the Democrats were blocking this bill was largely to make the bill worse and not make it better. What I didn't realize at the time is that while both parties were in their committees hashing out agreements between one another, that the leadership of the Democratic Party was actually putting together an even more bloated new bill in secret to basically try to force on the American public. Now look, nobody should look at the McConnell bill with rose-tinted glasses, but the basic premise of the bill that is being put forward in the Senate by Republicans is that we need to shore up the healthcare sector, we need to shore up the Veterans Administration, we need to make sure that vaccine trials can go through, and we also need to provide a way to stabilize companies so that we can stabilize the economy so that when people can go back to work, they actually have something to go back to. On top of that, there are provisions within the Republican bill that require the companies who take these low interest loans or actually no interest loans, these aren't bailouts, they are expected to pay the money back, to maintain the same level of payroll that they had back on March 13th, largely before businesses and the entire economy started shutting down. On top of that, there are increases in unemployment insurance, and Americans can expect to receive about $1,200 for their government if they're an individual of working age, and $2,400 if they're a married couple. Now, a lot of people say that's not enough. You need to guarantee income all the way down the line through the extent of this crisis. I tend to disagree with that. I think you give people money now, and as the crisis goes worse, since we don't know when it's gonna end, you continually extend what you can extend during the length of the crisis. It makes no sense to guarantee 18 months worth of funding if the crisis is only gonna last two or three months. Now, the Republican bill would also give $500 for every child in the household. Now, like I said, I'm not ignorant. The Republican bill, I'm sure, has a lot of pork and special carve-outs for special companies that have lobbied heavily to get something out of this $1.8 trillion package. It's not a good bill, but those are the core tenets of that bill. Now, unfortunately for all of us in this country, the Democrats have decided that this crisis is the perfect opportunity to advance all of their agenda points that they otherwise could not get passed through this Congress. Democratic Majority Whip James Clyburn believes that this crisis, and for those of you who are unclear about what's going on, 
it's this country falling into a Great Depression is a perfect opportunity, in fact, a tremendous opportunity, to restructure the country to fit their vision. And as if that quote wasn't bad enough, going through the provisions of the Democratic Stimulus Package definitely live up to Rahm Emanuel and James Clyburn's quotes. Because when you delve into this, and the best way to look at this is going and looking this up as a PDF form and just typing into the search bar the dumbest, most disconnected things from the crisis that you can possibly think of and see if you find them, which majority of the time you will, because the Democrats have decided that unless they get their completely unrelated policy goals passed in this stimulus package, then nothing will get passed and the economy will continue to crater. What do I mean by that? Tucked away in this bill are unrelated items such as the federal government regulating how individual states conduct their elections. Now there are two things that are very interesting about this provision being tucked away in this stimulus bill. Number one, elections are typically handled at the state level. So this is clearly the federal government trying to usurp the authority of state governments. And the other thing that I found interesting about this is that glancing over this, brought back memories of a previous democratic bill related to the federal government regulating how the individual states conduct their elections. So on a hunch, I decided to copy and then paste into Google the exact text of this provision and it returned results from that voting bill that the Democrats proposed in January of 2019. So if you had any doubt that this was not related to the current situation, it's literally a section lifted from a previous bill that they could not get past that they're trying to sneak by you at this very moment. Now the next two things that the Democrats are willing to let us fall into a Great Depression over have to do with regulating the carbon emissions of the airlines. The first one are new fuel efficiency standards that the airlines must comply with. In fact, by 2025, the airlines need to figure out a way to become a carbon neutral industry. So if we're going to save them now, we're going to do so in such a way that makes them inoperable as businesses by five years from now. But that's going to be okay because three years from now, assuming everyone is fine and we make it through this crisis, we're going to have the equivalent of calorie counters at fast food places whenever we go and buy our airline tickets. That's right, the Democrats are mandating, as a condition for saving the economy, that airlines start printing the per- hydrocarbon cost of every plane ticket when you go to book your plane tickets so that you can know how much your flying is doing to CO2 emissions in the environment because that's really what matters right now. Now if you think implementing both ridiculous and industry killing regulations from the Green New Deal is bad as a precursor to saving the economy, another thing that's holding up this stimulus package is whether or not there are too many white men on corporate boards. That's right, as a requirement for companies that accept this money, they have to report back to the government their level of diversity in the corporate boardroom. Because what really matters right now is not whether we fall into a Great Depression. Because if there are too many white people on corporate boards, then we probably deserve a Great Depression because we're not being representative of the societies that we serve. So it's better to starve to death or suffer from this virus or any of the other negative consequences than the balancing act that the Congress has decided is unacceptable maintain its current existence. The Democrats are pushing wind and solar tax credits. Mr. President, what in the hell does a windmill have to do with this crisis? Other than there's some Democratic lobbyists getting fat and rich and they're willing to extort a crisis to try to advance their political agenda. Mandates on corporate board diversity. But wait, there's more. Because when it comes to our Congress, there's always more. There's also provisions in this bill that reorganize the way that community newspapers handle their pensions. What this has to do with the current crisis? I don't know. But I guess if you work for a community newspaper, this is a nice special interest carve out for you. There's also a bailout of the post office. And in case you were curious about that, the post office is not considered a non-essential industry. And in fact, people at the post office are not experiencing layoffs. So just tuck a bailout in there for the post office, just for the heck of it. I guess the post workers union, it's incredibly strong. Speaking of unions, there's also increased collective bargaining rights 
for federal workers that are in unions. Because you know what's more important than protecting, you know, the actual jobs of federal employees? Making sure that federal employees can negotiate against the government and rip us off for decades to come. There's also special carve-outs and directives to give money to minority-owned banks because of course there is. There's also a special carve-out for the John F. Kennedy Center for the Arts even though we can't all go out and see the arts because we cannot be in large groups, they need money to serve no one in this time of crisis. And by the way, if you're a race hustler out there, there's also a special carve out for you because every company, every large corporation that accepts these loans must institute diversity initiatives and hire diversity officers. Now, the reason I say that this is a special carve out for all these race hustlers is because a lot of the people that you see on TV and in the media ginning up racial tension in this country also sell the cure for racism, which is diversity training. However, not a lot of people are interested in their divisive, actually racist programs, so the federal government is just going to mandate it at gunpoint to companies that would otherwise go bankrupt without these loans. Now, while all of these provisions are in fact present in the 1100 page bill that I will link in the description box down below for you, I highly recommend you go through that bill and use the search bar to find terrible things within the bill. If you can imagine it and it doesn't fit anywhere near this crisis, it's probably in that bill. Use the search bar to find it out. Send the results of that to me on Twitter. Unfortunately, or even more unfortunately, because I think I've said unfortunately like 600 times in this video, there's actually an even larger 1400 page monstrosity making the rounds through Congress right now at this very moment that at the time of me recording this video is not available online. I expect in that 300 extra pages, we're going to see more terrible provisions that have nothing to do with this crisis that will help the Democrats further their goal in restructuring the country in their own image. So yeah, as we all wonder what's going to happen next to our families, to the economy, to ourselves, just remember that the Democratic Party has declared loud and proud that you are not worth saving unless you bend the knee to the Green New Deal and all their woke social justice nonsense. But those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, then show me by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social medias. The support links are in the description box. This has been me talking about the Democrats taking the country hostage. Till next time.